Now, on this, you also talk about the fact, in terms of somebody finding their purpose, mm-hmm. you talk about using your curiosity mm. to lead you to your purpose. Right. Yeah. You don't have to look for your purpose. Just follow your curiosity and your purpose will find you. That's yeah. what I say. Yeah. And so let me give you an example, okay? I mentioned that I moved to Los Angeles. A couple months later, I'm in Agape. Mm-hmm. Loving the experience. We've talked about that on, on our other interview. Yeah. And then um, a couple months after that, I'm in a yoga class in West Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And I there was the yoga class of a teacher whose class I had taken one time in New York. I lived in New York. He had just moved to uh, Los Angeles mm-hmm. a couple month a couple months before I did, and the reason I went to that class in New York is because my girlfriend drugged me to his class. It Not was, drugged with drugs. Drugged. <laughs> <laughs> she dragged me yeah, to his class. Yeah, <laughs> and and she said this is the most amazing class. You have to come. But it was in a very inconvenient part of town. But I eventually I relented and I, I went and I was like, oh yeah, I could see this is why you know she was wanting me to come here. So anyway, I I ended up in this guy's class again, and turned out, you know, he remembered me from the class in New York because that was years before. Because mm-hmm. he remembered my girlfriend and he had a crush on her and he's like, oh, you're the guy that, <laughs> that ruined <laughs> he had my. A, he had a crush on your girlfriend. He had a crush on my girlfriend, <laughs> but he ended up breaking up with his girlfriend. I broke up with my girlfriend. We both moved to Los Angeles. We went down and got a coffee. Turns out he was going to Agape as well. Wow! And so we connected over that. And then um, we became fast friends. And he would always bring up the subject of meditation. Have you meditated today yet? Mm-hmm. And I was like a, I was an occasional meditator. Mm-hmm. I wasn't that enthusiastic about it, but I liked doing it because it was something that was novel. Mm-hmm. But he liked to do it all the time. Mm-hmm. And and he ended up introducing me to my meditation teacher later mm. on mm-hmm. so anyway it was just a matter of following this curiosity let me go and see what this class is all about and uh, I ended up curiosity in this class your whole life purpose exactly yeah but i didn't know that was happening right the first one was let me appease my girlfriend like right i was curious about that right, right right going to this class and then moving to los angeles from new york following my curiosity there I, there's no way i could have known during any part of that journey that it was going to lead me to having a conversation with you. Right. You know, Plus, podcast. you didn't even know Agape existed at that time. I didn't time. even know Agape existed, no. Yeah. But, you know, I could keep going you know, on all the little points along the line, and it's like, I was just being curious. Yeah. And, you know, people will ask me, like, did you get into meditation because you had a, 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 a dark night of the soul? And, mm-hmm. and I say there's two <clears> ways <throat> out of all of my experience working with people, there's really two ways that people come to this higher level knowledge. Mm-hmm. One is through the dark night of the soul, the other is through curiosity. Mm-hmm. You know, you have people who are just they just have these questions and right. there's no answers. Yeah. And they just keep seeking and seeking and seeking and seeking and eventually, you know, they find truths yeah. that they resonate with and right. they go deeper and deeper into those truths. And right. so I was more in that camp than than the dark night of the soul camp. Fortunately, because I think we're all moving in that direction. Well, you know, people grow through pain or insight. That's right. You know, and Pain will push you through the door, and insight will pull you. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but this, when you describe curiosity, it appears as though you're describing like a, more of a of a childlike nature. Sure, a person that's cynical uh, is not really curious; they're more protective. Mm-hmm. You know, a person that's a, a cynic, you know, a critic, they they close themselves off to their own curiosity. So if you're curious, you you have to be kind of open. It's mm-hmm. like I don't, I don't know what this is, but I'm going to go check it out rather yeah. than, oh, I'm not going to be taken. That's a, I'm not going to be hurt. I'm not going to do anything that's going to make me look foolish. Mm-hmm. You know, so curiosity, is, it's really a high state of consciousness. You know, in, in David Hawkins' hierarchy of consciousness, he talks about the fact that gullibility is way higher, vibrates higher than cynicism mm. or skepticism, mm. that even if you g- do get taken on your path, but you're being open and curious, you're vibrating higher than someone that's not doing anything. I'm not gonna be taken, I'm gonna be a cynic, I'm gonna be a skeptical. So curiosity is a much more open space to be. You know, mm. where is where is this leading me? It reminds me of this, um, so prior to going to India to study meditation, which I was really curious about doing, mm-hmm. so much so that I was taking that leap of faith, I didn't have the money to do that, mm-hmm. right? But and this is 2007, so 
I had been involved in a Ponzi scheme. I didn't know it at the time mm -hmm. until I got a letter from the Department of Justice with the <laughs> notification unit <laughs> that a lot of money that I had invested into this foreign exchange company, this is before Bernie Madoff came to light. Okay. Um, I felt much better after Bernie Madoff came to light. <laughs> yeah, I was embarrassed. By comparison. <laughs> yeah, I was embarrassed before that, but I had lost probably $75,000 wow, or something like that, big... which was a lot of money for me at the time. I was yes. 20. I was like 32 years old that's or something. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And so, but during that time, I um, I was also involved in real estate. That was back during the real estate bubble mm -hmm. that Dude. burst. So yeah. I was just like, I, I lost my shirt, my pants, my socks. I lost, <laughs> I lost everything. Minimalist. You were forced I minimalist. Was, I was a forced minimalist. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but I started getting these, these um, credit card offers for balance transfers. Yeah. I needed $14,000 to go to India and do mm -hmm. that whole thing, become a meditation teacher for three months. And I remember getting a credit card notice uh, a balance transfer notice or or offer uh for, and it was like you take this fourteen thousand dollars in cash interest free for 18 months mm -hmm. and uh you can use it for whatever you want to use it for etc so normally i would not have looked at that as a viable you know right. resource for funding something because i was like okay well, this is going to put me in a lot of debt or whatever but i saw that actually as the way when mm -hmm. I got it, it felt right, and I used that. It came at the eleventh hour too. Mm -hmm. By the way, I needed the money was due like two days later, mm -hmm. so I got that, got the cash, paid for the thing for the trip, and I would not have gotten that had I not been in real estate, and I would not have been in real estate had I not invested in the Ponzi scheme, not mm -hmm. knowing it was a Ponzi scheme, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting at the table of the real estate uh, agent to sign the papers and feeling everything in my body was like, "Don't do this." You know, this is not this is not the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking, okay, I'm going to become the next Donald Sterling or <laughs> Donald Trump or whoever, whatever real estate mogul you can imagine, <laughs> Grant Cardone or whatever. And um, and I and that lesson taught me, you know, again, it was affirmation. Listen to your heart. Listen to your heart voice. Mm -hmm. It always has your best interest at heart. And also, um, it taught me that I had no passion for real estate, mm -hmm. and so I don't want to spend any of my time doing that. I want to. Mm -hmm refocus my attention on what I feel passionate about. But I have to also admit that if I hadn't had that experience, I, w I would not have had the other experiences. Right, so it's right. this interesting Led contradiction, you, you know? Yeah. It's like well, an apparent there's loss. gullibility mm -hmm. there that yeah. helped me. And there was a little ign a practice uh, ignorance that yeah. also, <laughs> and, and it's just, it reminded me, you can't stop you can't stop your path from happening. Thank you so much for watching. Just FYI, we post a new video almost every day, so make sure you comment and subscribe below so you don't miss out on anything. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really gonna love this one as well. And if you ever wanna see a playlist of all of my podcasts or all of the plot twists or any other category of videos, you can find links to those in the description below.